The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel welcomes you to this edition of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Weekly Update, brought to you by... Each week, our community makes history. Each week, you make history. And each week, there's only one source to turn to for the first take on history. You know what that is? Subscribe to the Sentinel right now to discover the history being made in your own backyard. The Mendian Honey Eye Falls Lima Sentinel. More than just your news, it's your history. Hey, welcome everyone to this week's edition of the Mayor's and Supervisor's Update. I'm Chris Carosa, publisher of the Men in Honey Oil Falls Lima Sentinel, and each week we bring you the goings-on in the towns and villages in our coverage area. This week we'll be starting with Rick Milne in the village of Honey Oil Falls. Rick, what's going on there? Well, as always, it's great to be here, and it's nice to see Brent on today as well. Um, I'm going to start actually with the county of Monroe today. Um, just because there's a couple things going on that I wanted to mention. The organization uh, continues to take shape with the new majority leadership, and I'm very happy to have been reassigned to the Public Safety Committee. This was very important. This was a very important committee for me personally uh, to remain on. And I've also been assigned to the Health and Human Services Committee, um, which was a committee I was on uh, when I first started on the ledge. So I'm very happy to be back on that committee as well. Next week, we get back to our full business with committees all starting up um, and business moving forward. So uh, this time of year, the beginning part of the year is always a little bit slow, um, but now we're getting back into everything full throttle. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Supervisor Falk from Lima mentioned um, and talked about the Youth Awards for Livingston County. Um, I'm very happy to also announce that the Monroe County Youth Award program is scheduled to take place on April 18th, 2024, beginning at approximately 5.30 p.m. And that takes place at Monroe Community College. It's a wonderful event um, showcasing some incredibly talented young individuals from our general community, from the HFL district, uh, Pittsford, the Rush Henrietta area, all part of my legislative five district and now Parenton as well. Um, youths can be nominated through the following link. And I want to stress that this has been sent to the Sentinel as well to make sure we get that link correct. But it's www.monroecounty.gov forward slash youth dash award dash form. So that's www.monroecounty.gov forward slash youth dash award dash form. Legislators will also be working with their school districts and local service organizations in an effort to find these incredible nominees. There are multiple categories or age brackets um, awarded. Age 12 and under, young citizens of excellence. Age 13 to 15, young citizen of excellence age 16 to 21, and then up to age 24 for youth with intellectual or developmental disabilities, young citizen of excellence, and then one for the adults as well, which is the Willie J. Lightfoot Youth Advocate. And this is an adult advocate for youths. Uh, we know we have great candidates in our area. These awards for these awards in our community has recipients each and every year, and I'm sure this year will be no different. So be looking for that. Um, we hope that we'll get a lot of nominations from this general area. Um, moving back to the village of Honey Oil Falls, really the focus this week has continued to be the cold weather and the clearing of streets, sidewalks, and parking areas. During these snow events, which we're having this week, and the cold events, which travel right into next week, um, please do your best to keep your vehicles out of the street parking, especially overnight or for long periods of time, and also out of the non-overnight parking areas in our lots. Our crews need the ability to get to these areas easily and thoroughly to clean them from the snow, slush, and ice. Lastly, be very careful out there um, walking. There is a very pretty, uh, very thick coating of ice under much of the snow. And each year we, we also get complaints from residents about their driveway ends getting plowed in um, after we, they have shoveled or plowed. This obviously impacts us all, me included, and it is a challenge. We understand your frustration. We try to do the best we can to keep things clear. 
but there isn't anything we can do at the end of your driveway or where the sidewalk meets your driveway. So we apologize in advance. That's just part of being in Western New York and in the snow belt area. But again, be careful out there shoveling as well. Some of this snow and slush can be very heavy. And uh, if you need help, try to call one of the snow removal professionals to help you out if need be. With that, Chris, we thank you for the opportunity to be on and we hope everyone has a great week coming up. All right, thanks, Rick. And now it's over to Mike Falk in the town of Lima. Mike, what's what's leaping in Lima? Hello, Chris. Uh, thanks for having us as always. Uh, starting off with the Livingston County end of things. Um, Livingston County is uh, proud to announce a little over half a million dollars in funding for the work of Cornell Cooperative Extension. Uh, since 1913, uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension Livingston has provided county residents with unbiased research-based information tools, information, tools, and education. The agency also provides programs and services, including agricultural education, uh, community-based nutrition, traffic safety, and veterans initiatives. The county's funding will help expand and enhance some of the core programs offered by Cornell Cooperative Extension, including the agricultural aspect, food safety, parenting education, and 4-H youth development. The Livingston County Board of Elections announces a new I Voted sticker contest. Uh, they're asking for students in uh, grades 5 through 12 uh, to create a unique logo design that includes the words I Voted, and uh, the winner, the stickers actually get produced and get handed out on election day for everybody to put onto their uh, coats. Uh, you can enter and get more information uh, by uh, calling the Board of Elections at 243-7090. Uh, or you can just go ahead and come up with your I voted uh, stuff and you can uh, email the PDF, PNG, JPG, or JPEG file to election at co.livingston.newyork.us. The Genesee Transportation Council is seeking public comment on its Unified Planning Work Program. Uh, you can go and uh, visit uh, www.publicinput.com forward slash GTC UPWP. Uh, this is their uh, long range work planning. Uh, they have an effect on transportation projects all over this nine county area that we live in, uh, including uh, busing and roads and uh, all of that kind of thing. So if you want to weigh in, uh, certainly get a hold of them, uh, or uh, you can submit a comment via phone by calling 855-925-2801. The code is 6803, and you can leave a uh, voice message, or you can text UPWP24 to 73224 to launch a brief survey via text message. Uh, lastly, uh, of course, uh, we are going to be having a workshop here at the town of Lima uh, regarding uh, any uh, project thoughts about water outside of the village. Uh, that workshop is going to be held here at the town hall on January 30th, 730 at night and it involves the town of Lima, the village of Lima, the fire department and ambulance, the agricultural advisory board, the town of Avon, uh, and the Livingston County Water and Sewer Authority. Um, we still are in receipt of an $11 million grant and uh, low interest funding of $20 million, uh, but the project that we had envisioned first did not pass, although by surveying every piece of land outside the village, we did get a pretty good picture of where water is wanted and needed. Um, and again, that survey included everyone, every landowner, whether they lived in Lima or not, 
and every piece of land, whether it has a home on it or not. I, going forward, it'll definitely be up to the voters. And so anybody in a proposed district who is a voter would be voting uh, via permissive referendum or referendum if it came to that, uh, rather than doing the door-to-door -door, uh, every piece of property survey. Any questions, certainly give me a call here at the town hall, 582-1130. Otherwise, uh, please plan on attending. Thanks very much, Chris. All right. Thanks, Mike. Okay, Steve, now it's your turn. How are we doing in Henrietta? Good. Um, got off to a quick start. We have uh, a number of uh, new projects coming in, um, not all of which have been uh, fully announced yet, but... Um, we also have a bunch of town projects ongoing uh, in addition to the stuff we have been working on, like the town court and uh, the, the ballpark upgrades. Um, we've got going out this week, we've got bids going out for a irrigation pump house uh, upgrade for the golf course. So basically we've been putting in all new irrigation system and uh, it's time to upgrade the actual pumps themselves and their control system. So that goes out. Uh, Wednesday and then uh, next the following week we've got bids going out for the next phase of the Lehigh Station Road sanitary sewer system so um, at this very center of town uh, there were a whole bunch of houses that were still on septic um, and uh, part of it had to do with that the sewer system with, that fed the high school was from the south side of the high school and these are all the houses across the street so through uh, the community development block grant program we were able to get enough funding to assist with this uh work to get these older houses on the sewer because a lot of them their septic systems were failing and the newer standards might not have allowed them to get a easily fit a uh septic system in, onto their existing property so um it's been a great project working with the county and the funding comes from housing and urban development. So um, they still have to uh, contribute through the um, sewer district, but it, you know, for years they've been trying to do this, but that the annual costs would, would have just been exorbitant. So like I said, we found ways to get the cost down so uh, residents could do it. So we're excited about that. Um, and uh we also have some proposals from our uh, um, Color Henrietta Green Group that they want to put together a community garden um, that grows fresh vegetables and then distributes them through uh, RAFT, which is the Rush Henrietta Area Food Terminal. So, um, you know, one of the things you often hear uh, when you when there are issues with people who have food insecurities, they often have a hard time getting healthier foods, uh, especially with food cupboards. You know, a lot of people um, donate perishable, uh, non-perishable foods, which makes sense. Um, but that then means they don't have fresh fruits and vegetables to give out. Uh, so we're looking to do something about that. Um, it's going to be largely volunteer. They're look, reaching out to some uh, scouting organizations to see if any Eagle Scout uh candidates want to do you know build a shed or fence or bench or you know some of the stuff for the site so um it would be on town land uh that uh is currently not being utilized as park land or anything else so it's it's a good potential use it'll be interesting as we go forward and then uh finally the other big thing we're doing uh as we've been saying and again that the irrigation is part of it we're taking over operation of the golf course. Um, it used to be called the Riverton uh, Golf Club or the RIV for short. Um, wanting to differentiate it from the uh, private enterprise that used to be running it, we've decided to, or at least I'm putting a proposal in front of the town board. We'll see what they decide, but um, we're gonna propose that it'll be called the Riverton Oaks Municipal Golf Course. And the Oaks comes from, if you go back to the oldest maps, that's how it was actually first identified. And then it was just shortened to the Riverton uh, Golf Club. So um, we kind of went back to the 
to the, its origins. So uh, excited about getting all that stuff up, up and running. And uh, that's about it for this week. All right. Thanks, Steve. And now over to Brent Rosiak, who's standing in for John Moffat for the town of Menden. Brent, what's going on there? Yeah, well, I want to thank you for having me today. I hope everybody's staying warm with this fine January weather that we're having. Um, one thing that we've been working on in the town of Menden in 2023, we completed a sidewalk feasibility study for extension of sidewalks in the hamlet and the surrounding areas. Um, Next steps that we'll be looking to do in 2024 with that would be the environmental review of the sidewalks and then start putting together some construction documents with an engineer. Uh, we may look at piggybacking some of this construction off of a state bid, or we may look at putting out bids by ourselves, so the town amendment by ourselves. Um, if everything went well, we would be lucky to be looking at construction maybe late fall of 2024. Most, most practically, we're going to be looking at 2025 for looking at some of these sidewalk extensions, which will likely be done in phases. Um, we'll be looking to put up our feasibility study on the town amended website for the public to review if they'd like. Um, in Hamlet news, I know last week, Supervisor Moffitt talked about some of the new businesses that we have going on in the Hamlet. Today, I'd like to touch base with some of the existing businesses and what they're looking at doing in current events that are coming up this year. Um, as we know, April 8th, we've got our total solar eclipse on the schedule. Many of the businesses are planning a weekend full of events down in the Hamlet uh, on the 6th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, they're going to be looking to put this out on social media so you can plan accordingly in the near future. Uh, and down at 20 Deep, the winery that's uh, nearby the Hamlet will be putting on a Honey Falls Menden Rotary sponsored event on the day of the, on the, day of the eclipse and and, uh, tickets for, are for sale on the HFM Rotary website. Uh, Menden 64 has got an art show coming up this Wednesday with Chris Knight, January 24th. Uh, on February 4th, they've got a beer pairing with food from five different chefs. Uh, if I remember correctly, that's a in between the NFL playoffs and the Super Bowl, so you should be available to get down there. There's no football. Um, on they have a Valentine's Day menu on February 10th. Uh, they planned it a little bit early this year uh, because, as I think we are most aware, Ash Wednesday falls on February 14th this year. Um, Westminster Chapel, which is on Route 251, west of 64 intersection, they have got a Sweethearts Dance for Families on February 10th. And this is, they're trying to replace the void. There used to be that father-daughter dance that Manners will put on, which seemed to uh, cope, kind of put a damper on that. So they're trying to fill in the gap of that event. And they also have had another Pine Falls Mountain Rotary event planned on March 2nd for a casino night down at there. Uh, Westminster is also proud to announce that they have the Haven and the Hamlet, which is an Airbnb that's right next to their uh, chapel. As you're pretty probably aware, they do a lot of wedding events down there. And when they're not running out this Haven to the wedding parties, they're looking to run it out to maybe guests of families who are visiting our area. So we do have an option to stay your visiting family to stay in the Hamlet. They don't have to go to a neighboring town for a hotel. Um, so any of these events that I've talked about, you can find at bookwestminster.com, menden64.com, townmenden.org, or hfmrotary.org. Uh, once again, I want to thank you for having us today, and uh, look forward to seeing what everybody else has. All right. Thank you, Brent. Rick, anything you might have forgotten? What? Oh, you're muted if you're... Uh... Sorry about that. No, we're good. Uh, I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Rick. And thank you guys for being here. Thank you all for watching. Remember, this airs every Sunday at one o'clock. Just, just like our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel.
And when those platforms begin running it, you'll be notified so you can watch it all. Otherwise, if you prefer to read, the transcript is published every week on Thursday in the paper. We'll see you all next week. Bye-bye for now and go Bills. Imagine yourself communicating with a difference. Pandimensional Solutions helps you do this. Whether live spectator events, taped broadcasts, or real-time audience-engaging programs, you can benefit immediately from the tools Pandimensional Solutions will share with you. Do you want to make a difference? Contact us at pandimensional.com.